Managing financial matters is just a very important part of caring for our family members. It can be tough to convince someone that they need help. You know, even if all the signs are there, it can still be tough to get them to open up and talk to us about what's going on. So it's going to require more of a gentle approach. Don't come in like, Dad, you are not handling your business correctly. I want to take over and look at your checkbook. I mean, that's not going to go over well at all. So keep it sort of a gentle approach. The content available on this podcast and on LoriWilliamsSeniorServices.com has been produced for educational purposes only. The contents of any episodes do not constitute medical, legal, or professional advice, do not reflect the opinions of this company, any of its parent companies or affiliates, and do not create any type of professional relationship between the audience, guest, and the host. No person listening to this podcast should act or refrain from acting on the basis of the content of a podcast without first seeking appropriate professional advice and or counseling, nor shall the information be used as a substitute for professional advice and or counseling. Lori Williams Senior Services, LLC, expressly denies any and all liability relating to any actions taken or not taken based on any or all contents of this podcast. Welcome to Aging in Style with me, Lori Williams. I'm an optimist by nature, and I believe you can follow your dreams at any age. My grandmother's journey with dementia ignited a passion in me to work with seniors. I've spent the past 13 years learning about seniors and aging. In my mid-50s, I followed my own dream and founded my company, where I use my expertise to help seniors locate housing and resources. On this podcast, we cover all aspects of aging. Join us each week to meet senior living experts and inspirational seniors who are following their dreams. The fact is, we're all aging, so why not do it in style? Hi, welcome back for another episode of Aging in Style with Lori Williams. Today, our topic has been inspired by an event that happened last week. I spoke with a with a lady who was pretty much distraught trying to help her mother who lived out of state. And it, it can be difficult when parents are thousands of miles away and the kids are, you know, not there day to day. And sometimes there's a family friend I just did air quotes around that, who has stepped in. Maybe you trust this person. You may have known them for years as this family had. But come to find out, this family friend wasn't all she appeared. And she was actually taking advantage of this woman. And uh, when the family got up there, I'm not going to tell all the details, but kind of the most horrifying was something had happened to the mother. She was hospitalized and had gone to rehab. And so she had been away from her house for a while. Well, she had thankfully not signed over all of her assets to this woman, this family friend, but the woman had taken over the house that this lady lived in. And I mean, had lived in for 50 years. And she had gone so far as to have all the locks changed and had moved, packed up All this woman's belongings, all of her belongings that had been there for 50 years or whatever, packed them up, got had a garage sale, got rid of some of her things. Everything was packed up in the garage and had the nerve to even start remodeling. She had done like remodeling to this home that she did not in any way own. So the way the family found out. They had flown up to go see the, it was actually the grandmother gone to to visit her and tried to go to the house, you know, grandma's house that you've gone to your entire life and they can't get in. The locks have been changed. The keys don't work. And when they finally track down this woman and they get in and they see what has happened, they are just appalled. I mean, just devastated. So anyhow, that's what's kind of led me to talk about what I want to talk about today, which is can be a very difficult conversation for people to have with their parents or with their grandparents. But today we're going to talk about helping our aging parents with finances. And we're going to talk about some ways that maybe we can reduce resistance because it is it's it's one of those things. It's really hard to go talk to your parents about something that is it is a sensitive topic. People don't openly like to talk about their finances. So we're going to kind of break down that wall and see how we can help and be a resource for our family members so that they don't end up in a situation, a bad situation. You know, first off, I do want to talk about, you know, elder financial abuse and fraud is very real. And 
I would say we are seeing more since COVID. I mean, I don't have statistics on that, but I can tell you from families who call me that there's definitely an uptick in um, people calling and, you know, scamming over the phone. And I think, you know, part of it is if, if, you know, if you're home all the time, you're lonely, you're a senior, you may let your guard down and talk to people you normally would not have. Or if there's a little dementia and you just, they trust the person they're talking to for whatever reason. So that's, uh, that's the first thing. Let's kind of talk about, about that because it's, it's not uncommon for our seniors to give their credit card information over the phone, especially if someone's pretending, you know, to be a grandchild in need. We've talked about some of these scams on uh, other episodes of the podcast as well. So let's talk about things to be alert for when we're talking with our senior family members, or if we have gained access that, you know, there is a power of attorney or someone who, or they are open to letting you take a look at their financial documents. So things like strange looking signatures on checks or legal documents, talk or evidence of unexplained money transfers. You know, if maybe your grandma's saying, oh, this sweet yard man, you know, he's going to do this <laughs> this big project and I just had to give him $5,000. He's putting a deck on my house or something that, you know, like why would you be putting a deck on your house? You know, if it was something that was not discussed and just makes no sense at all. Changes in their will, changes to the mortgage, maybe taking out a loan or starting like new lines of credit, credit cards, things like that. Missing jewelry or cash you know, if you see that they've withdrawn cash, there's no explanation for it. Any kind of unusual requests, like sizable charitable donations, that is also a huge thing. So those are some signs that we need to be aware of that there is some elder financial abuse going on. But let's talk about ways that we're going to be able to reduce that resistance, right? So that we can get our senior loved ones to speak with us and share information so that we can work together to keep them safe. So like I said, it's a super sensitive topic. Money is a sensitive topic for all of us, right? None of us want to share, you know, what we have going on in our lives. So, um, you know, managing financial matters is just a very important part of caring for our family members. It can be tough, to convince someone that they need help, you know, even if all the signs are there, it can still be tough to get them to open up and talk to us about what's going on. Um, so it's going to require more of a gentle approach. Don't come in like, Dad, you are not handling your business correctly. Let me I want to take over and look at your checkbook. I mean, that's not going to go over well at all. So keep it sort of a gentle approach. You know, for example, some things to kind of look for if they're forgetting to pay bills, you know, you go to visit and you see that, you know, there's overdue, you know, statements, a couple of different ones laying around. They're making some unwise purchases, such as suddenly building on, you know, a deck to the back of their house that was never discussed before, or just other just things that they would normally not purchase, getting confused about their accounts, anything like that. It, those are your clues that it's time to really step in. But even if they are having these problems with their finances, they're still going to be resistant to having someone get involved in their finances. And so the best advice is to just go slowly. As I said, be gentle, keep them included in the process and just be patient. So here are some thoughts to kind of help them not be so defensive and be more willing to work with you. First, work with them in this process, right? Include them, respect their decisions. If they're still able to manage their finances fairly well, be respectful of that and just say, you know, I'm just here to to help you. Just to, you know, I'm in the background here. I'm here with you need me. Don't just say I'm taking over. I'm in charge of your checkbook now. That is not the way to do it. You know, hopefully they'll appreciate that help that you're offering them to help them with paying bills. A lot of seniors I found they don't have like automated payments through their checking account. And that's so much easier. I think most most people under maybe under 60, I would say we have all of our accounts set up where it pays automatically. But a lot of seniors are resistant. They're used to, especially if they're 80s, they're used to writing that check. That's the way of life for them. They've always just written the check, 
paid their bills, you know, mailed it off. That's the way they always did it. So um, so they may be a little resistant to that, but maybe you can get them to, you know, see the benefit. And if you're helping them to automate it, it, you know, could make all the difference. If your senior loved one has dementia or any cognitive impairment, you're going to need to take over and step in. They're not making the right decisions with their money and can get into a lot of trouble. We see that often. Maybe you haven't seen your mom or dad for a year. And with COVID, in some cases, it's been, you know, going on two years now. And um, you go in to visit and you're horrified that things have not been paid. There's all these bills laying out or things have been paid two and three times the same bill. And I mean, it's just, I've had families call me and it's just a horrific mess to go through. So be really aware if there's some dementia, dementia or cognitive impairment going on, you really need to get involved. But of course, always just be kind make them feel included. And and yes, I'm going to repeat, be kind, because I get it. It is stressful. We all are leading stressful lives and busy lives. And now we're having to step in and not only manage our own financial affairs, now we're stepping in and we're managing our parents and what could be, you know, a big mess that you need to untangle. But still be kind and realize they need your help. This is the time to help. Also work with other family members so everyone's on the same page because families, there's always some drama, more drama in some families than others, but make sure everyone's on the same page because you don't want a sibling getting kind of their nose out of joint thinking, okay, what are you doing? You're taking over the money and you don't want any strife. So keep everyone on the same page. Do a Zoom call, three-way call. Everyone's, you know, in different states. Get people together and in some way and just be very transparent on here's what I found. Let's make a plan. We're all on the same page together because the goal is you just want to help mom or dad or grandma or grandpa and make sure they're okay. It is critical to make sure you know where all the important documents are. So that's number two. Let's find our important documents. And we did a podcast. Gosh, I don't remember which number it was, but it was excellent. We had someone come on and she talked about putting a binder together of all your documents and having everything in one place. And this is something I keep saying my husband and I need to do, but it's so important to have everything in one place bank documents, insurance policies, pension information, home mortgage, or if they did a reverse mortgage to have that information, car title, um, social security, any safe deposit boxes, uh, passwords, anything like that. It is just so important. Oh, actually, you know what? It was episode 39. It's called Getting Organized, Creating a Binder of Essential Documents for Aging Parents. If you have not listened to that episode, please go back and listen to it. And we'll have a link at the end of this podcast, too, so that you can find it. But in that podcast, the lady we interviewed, Lynn Von Villas, she did a phenomenal job. So she has been through this with both of her parents and uh, has set it up for her family as well. And it just will make your life so much easier. I mean, just things like having birth certificates or VA information. So all those things are going to help you so that if there's an emergency, you are not scrambling trying to find all these documents, Medicare cards, all that. Sorry, I keep thinking of things. So we'll have that <laughs> that link so you can go back and um, and listen to that episode. Number three, get access to financial accounts. So getting access to your parents' bank accounts, that's going to require some advanced planning and some paperwork. So that's where you're going to want to see about getting power of attorney so that you can have access to what's going on and that you can write checks or withdraw money, do the things that you can you can help manage, especially if there is some dementia. We also did an episode on this, and I did write this one down so I could mention it. Episode 48 is understanding power of attorney and a living will, all those types of documents. So you are definitely want to make sure that you've done some advanced planning, which goes back to having those conversations with your senior loved ones. Number four, back to just keep 
your entire family up to date on what's happening. Let everyone stay informed because you don't want someone saying, oh, oh, big sister jumped in and took care of everything and having their nose out of joint about it. So you don't want to have any family drama. So family meetings to talk about finances and spending and keep a record of um, any decisions that were made, plans to move money, anything, anything you can do to avoid any conflict or disputes among family members in the future. And um, number five, prepare for the future. So again, kind of back to understanding, you know, power of attorney, living will, if your family member, your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, they don't have a will or they haven't done any estate planning, really encourage them the sooner the better to get this done before there's any dementia. I mean, you're going to want to have, you know, certain legal documents in place in case of an emergency or if they should should pass. I mean, it can be a huge mess trying to sort through everything. So some advanced planning of course, there are some charges in advance to, to set it up, but it's definitely going to be worth it and worth the headache in the end if all of their their wishes and, um, you know, all their finances are in one place. So I hope this gives you some good information and kind of a place to start with having these difficult conversations. And like I said, as, as hard and awkward as it can be to start these conversations. It is so important, and I've said this before, but I'm going to repeat myself, to do it sooner rather than later. Get this done before there's some dementia or other health issues or something happens like a scam, like they've gotten involved with um a nice person who is taking advantage of them. So that's what we have today. So go back and listen to the other podcasts that I noted. And those will help you understand further and kind of have us jumping off place to get started. Okay, thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Aging and Style with Lori Williams. Please do share this information with your family and friends. I think it's so important that we all do what we can to help keep our seniors safe, especially from financial abuse or fraud. And like I said, have those early conversations with your mom, dad, grandma, grandpa. All those things are just going to make it easier and um keep them protected going forward. So you can always find our other podcasts that I mentioned. Go back on to my website at lauriwilliams-seniorservices.com. All podcast episodes are there. And if you have any questions or want us to cover a topic that you've not heard us cover before, please send me a message. We love your feedback. And thank you again for listening. We'll talk to you next week. <music>